Hello, this is Scott. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where I cover a variety of different data science and analytics topics, open source, commercial, um, and general topics. So um, a few weeks back, I did a session in Statistica on non-supervised machine learning, actually K-means clustering. And so this time what I really want to do is just kind of show you uh, something that's useful sometimes when you do K-means. So I'm going to call this 46B. Uh, it's essentially, I think in 46, hopefully I, I went through detail on how to construct the um, uh, workflow, but I'll show you that and the, the configurations. So well, let's just dive right in. I hope this video is fairly short. Um, this is essentially based upon this car insurance data that's available within Statistica. So if you go to open examples, you can find this um, this data set. And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to select variables. And, I, and by the way, if you haven't used this platform, I mean, you can just basically drop any node down to the, to the canvas and just configure it. And most of the default settings work really, really well. So anyway, my select variables, the variables I'm going to select to create my clusters is essentially the whole data. The reason I selected this particular data set is this combination of continuous and categorical variables. So I'm using one continuous variable called claim amount. We'll look at that in just a second. And then three categorical variables, holder age, car group, and vehicle age. So if we take a step back, we can just look at the data set real uh, briefly. These are very simple data set, 128 rows, four, four variables. Um, and so uh, what I want to do is I first want to generate clusters based upon the data um, and then I want to uh, ultimately our goal is going to be what drives the cluster generation so I'm going to generate the actual clusters there and this is just an S this is just a k-means cluster again see the uh, previous video on how you can configure this you can select the number of clusters you can do the default cross validation to uh, set an optimal number of clusters let the algorithm do it for you um, but you have full control over the settings within this node so I just generated a three cluster um, solution here and the um, if I look at the details of that solution, the, here are the rows and and this is what the upstream node generated, right? So for each existing row, it's in the data set. It classified the cluster and then it gave the distance um, of each point from the centroid. So the farther away you are from the centroid means that it, it was harder to classify this and and I've got videos on anomaly detection and everything, so you can look at those. We're not going to get into that today. What we're going to look at is, is cluster assignment um, and really what's driving the cluster. Because, you know, this is this is great that, you know, I'm, I'm generating this, um, but the obvious business question is going to be, okay, what are the cluster definitions and what, what's driving the cluster? And I'm going to use this data set to um, to do that. Um, I should note, when, if I go back to the output for this cluster, and that's in the upper right of this SVB node, the, the centroid, basically the, the key definition for each cluster is given in this table, right? So the first cluster, you can see the holder age and the car group and the different breakouts. So this is somewhat useful for descriptive um, generation of, of the cluster. However, sometimes you want to know, okay, what's really differentiating the cluster itself? And that's where we're, we're headed. All right. So one thing I need to do real briefly is my Statistica is going to assign that cluster um, in numeric, and I'm going to want to create a classification model. So what I'm doing here is I'm just changing this one value um, to text, and I do that with a, a variable selection um, or for, format, uh, variable format rename uh, node that I'm doing here. All right, so I do that, and that just just changes that type of the, the cluster from numeric to um, categorical. 
And then I'm going to do feature selection, and I'm going to use the same variables um, for the predictors as I used to generate the clusters. But I'm going to predict what the cluster assignment was um, with those variables. And so um, I'm going to run feature selection. But in the end, I'm going to create a, just a very simple model. It's, I'm going to use a cart model that's available. You can just drop this straight down to the canvas. Um, I don't need to reconfigure since I'm using feature selection. It's going to go ahead and configure the node for me. Um, this node, just to let you know, is certainly con totally configurable if you want to go in and, and, and look at it. But we want to drive, we, we want to look at one thing primarily is we want to look at what's driving the cluster assignment. And here it is. Um, there's the actual tree model which you can look at and we've looked at before but for this video we want to look at this right here this one table and i can visualize this this table obviously in statistica or spotfire or some other um, other tool but this gives me what is driving the cluster assignment and it's and it's standardized so claim amount is 100 percent and vehicle age is is 90 percent so that means vehicle age is actually 10% less than the, the claim amount driving the cluster assignment, those three different clusters. And then we can see that holder age and group, car group are about on par at 56 and 58. Um, and so, and they only contribute about six tenths of what claim amount does. So this is this is very useful output and it's just a kind of a different way to look at it. So I just wanted to throw a quick video out to say, look, you can you can generate clusters, but also when you want to try to understand the clusters and what's really driving the difference in clusters, you can just add a simple predictive model. And that's all I wanted to do is this video. So hopefully you can join me again soon and I'll see you.